Hey everybody. I've uh, been saying for a while now that I was going to try to do some carbon videos uh, <clears throat> on my channel, uh, especially on uh, the BC USA forum. Uh, <clears throat> I try to answer as many questions there as possible to help people uh, get started with their carving. But, uh, and I'm, I'm in my bedroom uh, right now. I'm not out, out in the woods, obviously. Uh, for those of you that follow my channel or, or know me on the forum, uh, you know that I have narcolepsy and have to deal with uh, the complications of, of that. So a lot of my carving is done here in the bedroom at my computer. I've got a garbage can that I uh, put in front of me for all my shavings to go into and, and uh, just sweep up what misses the garbage can. But I uh, wanted to go over just a couple of things that might be of, of help to some of you uh, and, and just uh, basically get a uh, uh, carving uh, tutorial series started with just a, a short, simple video. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to touch on uh, today uh, was the tools that I use. And you don't have to have expensive tools to get into carving. Uh, the main tools that I use are a Mora uh, 106 uh, carving knife. Got a three inch blade with Scandi grind. Uh, ballpark around $25, I think, uh, off of Amazon. Great, great carving knife. They make a 120 model 120 that's shorter than this one that I want to get sometime. This one, as I said, it's got a three inch blade and uh, at times it's it's handy to have a shorter blade. I can't remember the length on the 120. But, uh, spoon knives <clears throat> are a must to, to do any type of carving uh, for cooks or bowls, spoons. Uh, they call them spoon knives. Most people do crook knives or spoon knives. But uh, can't can't really do much carving without some type of type of crook knife or spoon knife. This one, in particular, is the Mora 164, and it's kind of awkward. I've got the camera over my head trying to get this set up to do this video, but there's the profile. Hopefully, you can see of the Mora 164, and it's relatively narrow which helps tremendously uh, with your spoon carving, especially uh, especially with spoons. When you're, when you're doing something as narrow or as small a, a shallow as a spoon, uh, you don't want something that's got a large radius to it. You want something that's approximately the radius of what you're trying to make. So <clears throat> that's, the, again, the Mora 164. And the, the Mora's, the spoon knives, the carving knives are great. The spoon knives, not so much. Uh, the spoon knives, and this is going to be hard to get on the video, but the spoon knives come with a secondary bevel on the edge, which does not work well at all <clears throat> for carving. Uh, you can see it on this one better probably because I haven't haven't worked on it yet but if if you notice the edge or the bevel starts tapering out and then right out here close to the edge it has a micro bevel on it which makes it not truly a scandy grind let's see if I can get that in focus one more time yeah, I think can you see it right on this outside edge here where it's glimmering that's the micro bevel that if you want these knives to to work well you have to remove and you want to get the bevel to go from the peak all the way out to the edge uh, and with the same angle this one <coughs> got a spoon sliding off this one the 164 try to get it back in focus Hopefully you can see I have done a considerable amount of work to and removed that micro bevel. So it's all the same bevel from the back of the blade all the way out to the edge. And they're, they're 
they're decent knives, but you do have to do quite a bit of work to them. Again, this is the 164, and this one is the Mora 163. get the profile of it and you can see it's got a larger radius on it compare it to the 164 if I can figure out everything's reverse in these webcams but you can see quite a bit of difference in in the radius <laughs> can't figure out how to hold them right to get that profile there we go Okay, so quite a bit of difference. The 163 has a lot larger radius. And the 163 has a double bevel. It's sharpened on both sides. And that can become problematic because a lot of times you use your thumb as support to push the blade through. Or your finger if you're pulling. Uh, get something up here again. If you're pulling like this, a lot of times you want to slide that finger up there to get better control uh, of the pressure you're putting on the knife. So that becomes problematic. <clears throat> but it's also an advantage because sometimes you get to where you need to cut at a certain angle and just the single bevel or right-handed, uh, this is made for a right-handed person, uh, and the, the 164 is blunt on the back, so you can put your finger against it to push or pull with. But there's times uh, when you may need to cut from a certain angle to be cutting with the grain to get a good smooth cut, that it's handy to have one with a bevel on both sides or a right and left hand spoon knife. And then... <clears throat> this is a homemade tool. Uh, scrapers come in real handy with carving. And this is just an old Stanley putty knife that I used my bench grinder to grind a profile on, just a, a rounded profile. I think I used a, uh, a quarter to lay out the radius on the end of it and then put it on the grinder. And uh, you can make, you can buy scrapers, but you can also make your own out of just about any piece of, uh, of scrap metal. The scraper, when, when, if you guys want to make your own scrapers, when you sharpen your scraper, uh, if you're using a bench grinder, uh, let's see, let me get something round here. I'll use this bowl as an example. And... Your wheel is spinning like this. You only want to sharpen from one side. Like if you're, again, if your wheel is spinning this way, sharpen only on one side. Don't turn it over and sharpen both sides like you would a typical knife. You only sharpen from one side. Because what you're trying to do with the scraper is create a burr. So you want the stone running in one direction where you'll get a good burr on this one side and again right the opposite of knife sharpening with a knife after you create that burr you want to remove it but with the scraper the burr is actually what does the cutting so you want to a good burr on there and you want to leave that burr on there you don't want to buff that off now <clears throat> on this old putty knife uh, it's handy because it has a Stanley name on one side on the other side it doesn't so I sharpen this one to where the burr is always on the side uh, that is marked Stanley and that way I know which direction to use the knife you see the Stanley mark there so I would want to be scraping using the burr to scrape with for that Another tool that I use uh, is sandpaper. And what I use my sandpaper on is these little rubber pencil erasers that you can buy at Walmart or uh, the office supply store. They're flexible enough to conform to the shape of what you're sanding. 
but yet they give you a fairly firm surface uh, <clears throat> that you can wrap your sandpaper around just like that and use it to sand with uh, if, if you're doing a sanded finish and uh, these are better than than just sanding by hand because when you're sanding by hand uh, your flesh is much softer than the eraser and you can get dips and, and humps in it but if you're wanting to try to flatten something out and get a good smooth surface on it you need uh, something with a backing pad to where that it will ride on the high spots and sand them off uh, to get those high spots down even with the low spots and we're going to talk about low spots getting rid of those low spots next I'm going to cut away for just a minute and uh, I'll be right back to talk about that. Okay, getting rid of low spots. Back when I was uh, younger and into hot rods, uh, into painting cars and whatnot, uh, when you were painting a car, we used to do what was referred to as color sanding. Uh, and what that is, is basically using two different colors so that when you sand and you hit the high spots the first color will be removed and then the second color that you're using will show up as the low spots and you can kind of do that <clears throat> with your carving too and it makes it real handy i i stain all my stuff with uh all natural stains this is coffee uh instant coffee that I keep in a little mason jar here and uh, you can use tea, you can use uh, coffee, you can gather you some walnuts and make your own walnut stain but when you're doing items that are going to be used with food um, such as bowls, uh, cooksa, spoons, uh, you want to use all your finishes that you put on it you want to be all natural but uh, <clears throat> what you can do is use your stain to basically color sand with and I'm going to color this spoon here real quick hopefully this is showing up good enough I'm going to color this spoon with my coffee stain And when I come back to start finishing the spoon, the scraper or sandpaper or knife, whatever I'm using to shape it with, will remove the high spots <clears throat> and the low spots will still show up as dark because of the stain Get that finished up there real quick spot there that I trimmed on of course <clears throat> everything that you carved you may not want stained uh, this is some spalted maple and uh, maple doesn't have a whole lot of color to it uh, naturally so on maple I tend to use something uh, even if it's real light a light coffee stain or uh, tea uh, something to give it just a little bit of color to make the grain pop you can see <clears throat> I'm gonna give that just a minute to dry but you can see this is spalted maple and uh, it's been stained with uh, the coffee stain and uh, it doesn't add a whole lot of color uh, but it just it adds just enough to make that grain pop and show up there's the bowl these have had several coats of tongue oil applied to them and uh, that's the only uh, top finish that I use on my carvings is tongue oil it's 100% food safe all natural 
but these have had several coats of tongue oil applied to them. And don't know well how well my lighting's pretty poor back here, but <clears throat> these have had several coats and uh, they kind of have a dull look to them right now. Focus here. Kind of dull looking. Uh, that's the way they'll look after your tongue oil dries. Uh, it'll get kind of a real thin film on them. But when you start buffing that with steel wool or sandpaper, whatever you use on the inside where it's smooth, you can use sandpaper. Uh, on the outside, I typically use steel wool. Uh, <clears throat> but when you start buffing that tongue oil, the, the sheen uh, will start to show back up, even though it looks dull right now. And uh, I typically buff in between every coat of tongue oil. Okay, this is still damp, so I'm going to cut away for just a minute, let this dry, and then I'll come back and show you what I'm talking about, about using the scraper or sandpaper to uh, color sand. Be right back. Okay, I'll give that a little bit to dry there, and maybe it'll be dry enough now. <clears throat> but uh, as you saw, I used the stain on this, the coffee stain. And uh, you can do this the same way with woods that you don't want to stain. Uh, usually when you're carving, just handling uh, the wood as you're carving, uh, will darken it somewhat uh, to where when you come back the next day or whatever to carve more on it, you can see uh, when you uh, trim a little bit away with your knife or whatever it'll be a little lighter color but all I've used on the inside of this spoon here is uh, the more 164 spoon knife so it's 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 not smooth it's it's rough in there and uh, some people like that personally uh, I don't I leave the outside of mine uh, with the tooled finish but for the inside of the spoon, uh, so the food will slide off easier, uh, easier to clean. Uh, I, I just personally, I like the inside of my spoons to have a good, slick, smooth finish. Uh, even though it's bushcraft use, uh, I, I struggle with that. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit OCD, but... Uh, uh, even though I'm trying to make it look rustic, uh, at least that part of it, uh, I want smooth, a nice smooth surface on it. So uh, what you can do, again, for your color carving, I've got my scraper, and with the label, uh, label side is the side that has the burr on it. And if I can do this in frame, <clears throat> I'm just going to take it. And start scraping the inside of this spoon to smooth out anything that's not uh, nice and smooth in there. This saves saves a lot of uh, sanding work. <clears throat> the scraper will remove material much faster than than the sandpaper will. And again, you're not uh, you're not cutting with this. We'll try to show you the shavings that it's making here in just a minute. This is not actually cutting the wood; it's just scraping the wood. Hopefully, you can see just real fine shavings in there that the scraper is creating. <clears throat> Let me dump those out just a little bit and get a little bit more back here. I'm not sure that that stain had enough time to dry. Just a little bit more than enough. I'll attempt to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, 
hopefully this will show up in the camera uh, again I don't have my lighting is not the best inside here but you can see the light spots <clears throat> that's where it's removing wood taking the stain off basically or removing enough wood that you get below the stain and then the darker places are where it hasn't scraped yet so it, it shows up as dark you still see the stain and I hope that's hope that's making sense and uh, I had that in pretty good shape with just the spoon knife so it's not real been show real drastically but uh, and I should have worked on my lighting before I did this, before I did this part of it anyway. But hopefully you can see that, and hopefully you understand what I'm, what I mean by using the scraper uh, to smooth out, and the the color sanding. But uh, as I said, I wanted to get at least a short little video, and I'm not sure how short this one will end up being, but uh, to go over at least the tools that I use and uh, throw in a couple of tips that I thought might be helpful to somebody. But I uh, hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did enjoy it, uh, click that thanks button. Uh, leave a comment. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those. And uh, <clears throat> if you like the video, uh, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, and uh, that way you'll... Uh, so you'll be notified whenever I do some more carving videos or some more bushcraft videos if you'd like to watch those but uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned I'll be back with another carving tips uh, video soon hopefully all right thanks everybody see you on the next one